What is up, programmers and coders? Today we're going to be solving a coding interview question, another coding interview question. Um, you know, we're just preparing for these technical interviews. You could be asked these at these companies that you want to work at and make a bunch of money, so you might want to pay attention, learn some of this stuff. So when you get into the interview, you might already know it, and you get asked this question, you could pass, right? This is a Amazon coding interview question, as well as it looks like Microsoft and Apple. According to uh, Code Signal, I have this linked in the description if you want to follow along, write the code. But uh, yeah, it's called Rotate Image. And uh, that's about it. Let's get into it. So if you've done any coding or programming before, I'm sure you've worked with arrays or at least know what they are at this point. Basically just a data structure that holds values. You can see in the example we have an array holding the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in this particular problem, we're going to be working with 2D arrays, two-dimensional arrays, also referred to as a matrix. And in this particular problem, it's referred to as an image. The image is going to be the 2D array that we're working with. A two-dimensional array is basically an array. You could see that there are sub-arrays as each element of the array. So arrays have elements. This, this array is an element of the outer array. You could see there are rows and columns. The two-dimensional array we're going to be working with in this case is going to be of size n by n, meaning that the number of rows, you could see there's three rows here, uh, each row being a subarray, is going to be equal to the number of columns. And you can see there's three columns here, right? So it's going to be almost like a perfect square as far as uh, rows and columns goes. They're going to be the same number of rows and columns, n by n, meaning n rows times n columns, n by n, square. All right, so let's look at some examples. In the first example here, we have two rows, yet three columns. Now, since the rows and the columns aren't the same, two and three aren't the same, that is an invalid input. We would not be getting this in this problem. We're not gonna be dealing with this input in our problem either because there are two columns, yet three rows, different columns and rows. The last input is exactly what we want. The same number of rows, three rows, three columns. So it's going to be like a perfect square when it comes to rows and columns, width and height. So that's what we're dealing with, just to clarify once again. All right, so we understand our input now. We're given this n by n 2D matrix, 2D array, whatever you want to call it, or image in this case. Uh, what is the objective? What are we going to be asked to do? If this was Amazon, are we the, the person's going to say, hey, this is your input. Now they're going to tell us to do something with it, right? What we're going to do is we're going to have to rotate this image, this input, 90 degrees clockwise. So we're going to take our n by n 2D array, and we're going to have to rotate that whole thing 90 degrees clockwise. So what does that mean? Well, basically, if you imagine it as a actual box, like I said, it's kind of like a square. If you did imagine it as a kind of box, like it's almost like you pick it up and you just turn it 90 degrees, right? You just turn it to the right, and all of these elements in the array... As you can see here, the one, two, three, the first row is gonna become the last column. You could see by these yellow arrows how everything is rotating. This one is going to the right, this three is going to the right. It's all going 90 degrees clockwise. So it's like you're picking it up and just turning it. The rows are becoming columns. You could see the first row becomes the last column, second row is still is the second column, and the last row is the first column. So you could see how the rows become columns here by rotating. All right, so now we know that this input array rotated is going to become this output array, right? After rotating 90 degrees clockwise. And we can clearly see this pattern here where the first row of the input array is now becoming the last column of the output array. And we've noticed that each row of the input array does become a column of the output array. And as you loop through the rows from, you know, the first row to the last row, you can kind of build these columns from last column to first column. That's the pattern we're seeing here. So we saw the first row became the last column. The second row becomes second to last column. And then we, of course, see the last row is becoming the first column of our output array. So since we know the size of our input and it's gonna be the same as the output, we can just make a new instance of an array, fill it with a bunch of zeros to that size that we want, and then we could fill it up using this pattern. 
Right, so we'll loop through our first row of our input array and then fill up that last column of our new output array. We'll repeat this on the second row and then of course take it all the way to the last row and first column of the output array. So you can see that using this method and initializing an array and just filling it up like with the pattern that we initially saw right off the bat, we get that exact output array that we want. These are the exact same arrays. So this solution is valid and it's a good way to do it if you want an easy way out, but if we're worried about these time and space complexities, this is not constant space. We're using a whole separate array to do this when we don't have to. So how would we solve this without using extra space, right? We don't want an extra array. Well, the only way to do that then would be an in-place rearrangement of these elements. So we want this input array to be the exact same array that we're outputting. So what we want to do is we want to go through this input array and we just want to swap all these elements and move them around so that it becomes the 90 degree clockwise rotation, right? So we have to think of an algorithm that is going to do that in the right time and then we're good on space as long as we do it just by swapping elements. We just have to think of a way, how can we swap these elements so that it becomes a 90 degree rotation? So we can solve this problem without extra space in two simple steps. Um, the first step is going to be to transpose our matrix. And uh, this basically means taking our rows and turning them into columns. You can see here in our input array, we are taking these rows, row by row, one, two, three becomes the first column. First row, first column, second row, second column, third row, third column. And we can do this very simply um, by just looping through our matrix or image or array and doing this basic swap, right? And this is the formula right here. We're going to swap the array of IJ, so row column, with the array of column row. And you could think of that where it's actually swap. I have this drawn out where we're swapping um, these values where the diagonal is not getting swapped. And this works out perfectly. Um, to convert the rows into columns. So the diagonals don't get swapped, right? If you're swapping array of zero, zero with array of zero, zero, if the column and row, if the indices are both zero, zero, there's gonna be no swap there, right? It would just swap this with itself, so nothing happens. Or if you swap position one, one with one, one, nothing's gonna happen. Um, two, 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 nothing's gonna happen, right? But if you're swapping row zero, column one with row one column zero right that's going to actually do a swap those are different elements so what we do is we swap with this basic formula it does these swaps throughout the whole matrix and the diagonal doesn't get swapped and uh, yeah it ends up perfectly working out that's just how it works out so that the rows become columns and right we already know that the rows have to become columns. The only thing we have to do now is change the order of these columns. So now before we go over how we can rearrange these columns to get it to that 90 degree rotation structure, uh, I think we should look at this part in code. All right, so here's the code for step one where we took those rows and we turned them into columns. Um, basically what we're doing is we're just getting the length of our matrix or image or whatever you wanna call it here and we're just looping through and we're doing that swap with that formula where you swap the row and column with the column row, right? So row column, uh, and then you set the row column equal to the column row, and then the column row gets set to row column, right? So you're doing that swap that we just looked at and uh, we set J equal to I in this loop because we don't wanna swap those elements twice, otherwise it's gonna be the exact same. So uh, just be aware of that. So now that we've turned our rows into columns, we just need to rearrange those columns, right? The column order has to be a little bit different. All right, so now that we've completed that step one and we've turned our rows to columns, basically we're in good shape, right? All we have to do is go from this array on the left to this array on the right, right? Um, so it's all about that column order. So the column order isn't what we want it. Um, we wanted the first row to become the last column, not the first row to become the first column. So we just have to rearrange these columns and it's actually pretty simple to do. Um, we're gonna be using a similar formula. We're gonna loop through this array, but instead of swapping um, with row, column, column, row, doing that diagonal type thing, we're going to do it more in a two pointer uh, style approach where we go row by row through the array and we have a pointer at the beginning and end of each row that go towards the middle 
um, they traverse towards the middle of each row and they swap those elements. So you could see how a pointer at the beginning of each row and pointer at the end of the, each row, we're going to be swapping those elements until we get to the very middle element. You know, if there's an odd number of elements, that middle element won't be swapped with anything. These will both land at the same middle element at the same time. Nothing, nothing is going to get swapped in the very middle. Um, if it was an even number, I've, everything will be swapped, right? So, uh, we're going to be doing a two-pointer style approach row by row and swap those around. So you can see when this one and seven gets swapped, uh, basically what's happening is while we do this, the columns are getting swapped to what we wanted in the first place. And uh, we're going to look at this in code now, and then we're going to go over some more examples so that you we can really solidify our understanding of this whole process here. So this is step two row by row traversal with the two pointer approach to swap that column order to get it where we want it to be. All right, so here is the code for step two, right? This is the code for step one up here. Here is step two where we're in this outer loop going row by row through our array. Um, and we are then going only to the halfway point uh, of the column, right? Because we're going inwards towards the center. So we don't go all the way to the end. Uh, we're just going to the middle. And on the, le the left pointer is just going to be IJ, row column, right? That's just how it goes uh, through each row. So the left pointer is fine, just as IJ, each element as you go through. And the right pointer is going to be N minus 1 minus J because it's the length of that row, minus one to get into the, you know, where we can actually reference indices so it's not out of bounds. So n minus one uh, is the last index of the row and then minus j. So j, as it gets bigger, we're going towards the center of that row. And as it gets bigger, we're subtracting it from the end of the row too. So we're also going the center from the right side. So from the left and right side, we're going towards the center, swapping those elements. This is, and this is just a basic swap, right? We're all familiar with this. We're just, it's just that swap we were talking about. All right, we're just taking the element, um, storing it in a temp variable, changing the value of it with the other element, and then changing the other values uh, to back to that temp, right? So basic swap, seen it a million times. All right, so let's just go through on one more example. This time we're going to be dealing with a 4x4 four four 2D array. Uh, so a bigger array, just so I could show you with our step-by-step -step process here. Uh, this is our input on the left here, and you could see how if we rotated this 90 degrees clockwise, it would look like this, right? First row becomes last column, second row becomes second last column, third row, third last column, fourth row, or last row is first column, right? We have been through this, and this is what would happen if you pick it up, you rotate it 90 degrees. So let's do our two-step process and see if this comes out correctly. All right, so step one first, transpose the matrix. So that means we're just swapping row, column, column, row. So everything gets swapped except for that exact diagonal, like position zero, zero doesn't get swapped. One, one, two, two, three, three. These don't get swapped. Everything else does diagonally. Um, so we're seeing, you know, two and five getting swapped, right? You could see that right here. You could see nine and three getting swapped, right? Nine and three got swapped. Uh, you could see, you know, 10 and seven get swapped. You could see 13 and four get swapped. You know, all these swaps going on here. I labeled them as well as I could. Um, 12, 15, 8, 14. But once what happens is after all of these swaps, and we already talked about this, all of these rows become columns. So the first row becomes the first column. Second row becomes the second column. Third row becomes the third column. Fourth row becomes the fourth column. So we're almost there. All we have to do is rearrange these columns, and that leads us into the step two. All right, so in step two, now that we have all the rows as columns, all we have to do is change the order of those columns, and we can do that by flipping horizontally. So we're going to go row by row and set pointers to the beginning and end of each row, and then start swapping those elements and heading towards the middle of the row, right? So we'll swap these first two elements here. And then those two pointers go towards the center, and then we swap the next two elements. And we're obviously seeing now how that just doing these swaps is changing the order of the columns, right? The thing that was at the beginning is now at the end, and the things in the middle are getting swapped too, right? So it's just getting flipped horizontally. We do this on each row until everything has been flipped horizontally. And then after flipping everything horizontally, of course, we end up with exactly what we wanted from the beginning, that 90 degree clockwise rotation from what we originally had. So we could see that this two step approach definitely works. It has the good optimal time complexity 
Uh, it's going to be two separate loops, but they're not nested, so that's not a big deal. You could do this in one loop, but I think understanding it and doing it in this clean way is just good for you guys to see. Um, it doesn't overcomplicate things, and two loops isn't a big deal in the grand scheme of things. That's why we drop the constants when we talk about time complexity, so 2n is nothing compared to an exponential or even worse. Um, so we have, you know, this is in place swaps, so there's no extra space. This is uh, linear in regard to the elements of the matrix. We're just looping through the matrix. So you could call it uh, O of M times N for rows times columns. Sometimes they do that. Or you could just say O of N, where N is the number of elements in the array. It's 2N. We drop the constants because it's not a big deal. If it takes a thousand seconds to loop through this, you know, matrix and solve this problem, then, you know, we do two loops and, you know, worst case, it's 2,000 seconds, right? It's not like we'd have to be dealing with a thousand squared, right? That's a much huge, that's a huge number. Or if we had to do a thousand to the N, right? A thousand times a t to the a thousand, like, that's crazy. So two times a thousand, that's nothing. So we drop the constant uh, time complexity wise. It's not a big deal. Um, and you yeah, know, space complexity, it's great. It's in place, no extra space at all. So we don't use any extra memory here. This is a pretty cool problem. I like this. It helps us understand, uh, just knowing how to work with traverse, manipulate, uh, 2d arrays, matrices is really good. And this could definitely be given. And I could see this being given, uh, in an interview. So Please make sure you guys understand this. Let me know if you guys have any cool solutions or if you have any questions in the comments below. And uh, look forward to the next question. Uh, hopefully you guys get this in one of your big tech company interviews and you can pass it now because you know it. Uh, also, if you, please like and subscribe to the video so it helps grow my channel. And, uh, you know, if you want to support me, i got the Patreon and stuff in my description. So also feel free to do that if you'd like to. Obviously don't have to. All right. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next question. Peace. Oh yeah, wait, also people on my last couple of videos say that the solutions don't work, um, but they do, I, I assure you they do. Here's the solution, all the code, right? Step one, transpose the matrix. Here's step two, where we flip horizontally. We could submit this on code signal. It's gonna work just fine. So don't rest assured these solutions do work. There we go, correct. All right, thanks, see ya.